Welcome, Brittany here, and I am getting started with the virtual paint party today um, on the sweet summertime mason jar. Um, and we'll just give folks a few minutes to get joined in who are going to want to paint with us today. And let's see if I can find my video. Hi, welcome. So this is our second uh, virtual paint party, and uh, I think the first one went pretty well. This will be uh, recorded and saved, so um, if you get called away or um, you know get uh, distracted with kids or whatever, um, it is saved, and so you can come back to it later. Um, and. So it will be saved on our page indefinitely. And I'm just trying to get my comments up. So say hi when you hop on. Um, but we are going to be painting the Mason Jar uh, Sweet Summertime Lemonade door hanger. And this kit was on sale. Um, and, um, but, what I want to say is that you don't need to have the door hanger to paint with us. Um, you could have a um, just simply a sketchbook, um, and you can just uh, sketch a mason jar on here. Uh, if you don't have the same colors, that's okay. Uh, maybe you have pink lemonade. Maybe you have iced tea. Um, so uh, just paint with us and enjoy. Um, some creative therapy this windy Sunday afternoon. I don't know what the weather is like in your part of the world, but it's windy here. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Mary. Hi, Emily. Um, so yeah, we will get started here in just a few minutes. I'm just uh, letting people get uh, joined. And trying to find my video so I can see comments a little bit better. Um, you could also paint this on like a stiff piece of cardboard as well and then actually cut the shape out so um, that holds up fine and uh, you could also paint this just even on a scrap piece of wood um, if you didn't pick up the kit. And let's see, I'm not a oh, here we go. Hi Stacy. Let's see if I can see my comments. There we go. Okay. Um, so to get started, um, I have um, uh, just a wood cut out of the mason jar that I've primed already. Um, I've got just a printout of the wording that I'm going to use, which is the sweet summertime. Um, the colors that I'm using are, I've got a black and a white, uh, the standard there. And then I've got a spring green that I'm going to add some greenery to my lemon. Uh, my base is a sunny day. Uh, and we're also going to use a little bit of a darker yellow. And for the top of the mason jar, I've got a blue cotton. And then for the straw, I've just got a pink eraser, some sort of bright pink. So, um, do I have kits still available? Yes, um, I can make more kits, yep. So if you're interested in that, I think my website's showing that I'm out, um, but if you want one, just message me and we can definitely get you one. Okay, so those are the colors I'm using. And the kit comes with um, your wood cutout. It will come with the um, uh, ribbon to make the ribbon. It comes with the sweet summertime. And yeah, so all you'll really need is brushes um, if you get the kit. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Let's see if I can, 
I don't know if I can place it anywhere that you'll be able to see it at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna try and paint upside down. I'm gonna push you guys down a little bit. Just gonna get you a little closer. Okay. Um, some other things that you'll need when painting is something to put your paint on, a plate, um, a straight edge um, for drawing on the, um, uh, the straw, uh, a pencil, uh, some scissors for cutting the ribbon, and just some different brushes. Today I'm going to use um, a wide brush. So something just with a, a wide head on that. It can be flat like that. Um, and that's just to get a, a really base coat on fairly quickly, but you don't need that one. You can use any brush, even if it's um, you know something a little smaller than that. Uh, that would work as well. Uh, the bigger the brush, the faster you can get that base coat on is all. Um, and then I'll also use a couple different rounds. I'm gonna use, oops. Um, just a, like a number four round. And then I will also use a liner today for some of the small detail work. So, and I think this is a number two or a zero would work here. So just a couple brushes is all you need for this one. Um, and then you'll want a cup of water, obviously, to clean your brush, a rag, something to protect your table. Okay. So we're going to get started with using the Sunny Day paint and this is going to be the base of our lemonade and like I said you could use um, any color you have at home if you're just painting along with us without the kit. Uh, if, you're use, if you're making maybe pink lemonade you could use a light pink. Um, if, you're using, if you're making iced tea you could use a light brown. Um, and so I've just put a little bit of paint on my plate and we'll load it up with paint. And if you hop on, uh, say hi and let me know what you're doing so I can say hi back. Um, so we've got just a good amount of paint here and we're gonna get that first coat on. Yellow is a really translucent, transparent color. It's uh, uh, something that sometimes takes a couple coats to get a good solid yellow, um, which is why I pre-painted this board white, or I primed it actually, I put a primer on it, just so that I wouldn't have to add um, uh, multiple coats of yellow. This is the light yellow. So this is, oh, your, your tubs aren't uh, labeled, are they? Um, this is the sunny day. So you'll have one like this, and then you'll also have a darker one like that. So we are putting our base coat on with the light. Um, and then you're just going to paint the yellow up to um, however high you want your lemonade to be and just create uh, a wavy line at the top and then we're just going to continue adding the yellow on um, but back to adding the primer to the board that just helps me not have to add so many coats of yellow to this to get the desired look I want So my family um, isn't allowed on the internet while I do a live video, uh, simply so I don't lose connection or you know I don't get any legs uh, lagging in my video. And so they're playing Monopoly in the kitchen, which is a room away from us. So hopefully it's a uh, 
a fun game in the Monopoly. We always seem to, you know, you know how Monopoly can bring out the worst in people, so if we hear chairs flying or something, just ignore the noise coming from the other room. Monopoly is not a very uh, friendly, fun family game for us. We are very competitive with that game, and so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I got my first coat on, and uh, because I had it primed white, um, it looks pretty good, and I'm probably not going to actually add a second coat because I want it to look, um, I want some of that white to come through, and it, it makes it look like lemonade a little bit more, my um, give it some variation there. So I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm going to grab the cotton blue and we're going to paint the top of our mason jar. And so when you wash your brush, if you're... Um, kind of new to painting. Um, just a quick uh, swish in some water. Um, this is my water cup. It's just a crusty old mason jar with some water in it. Um, and then using a rag, you want to, uh, you know, push as much water out of your brush as possible, but then squeeze that water out. Um, and any excess color too, that really helps so you're not mixing your colors. Um, and then it also helps to reshape your brush so you get that shape back that can kind of get um, away from you when you're uh, swishing it in the water. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Mom. Hi, Joy. Hi, Don. Um, okay, so we're going to add the blue to the top now. And I'm just using, again, my bigger uh, brush so that I can quickly get the blue on there. So this uh, mason jar, uh, Sweet Summertime, is a kit. Um, our website right now shows that it's out of stock, but if you're interested in grabbing one, uh, just message me and we can hook you up with that. And we do do deliveries, so we can deliver it um, either on a Wednesday or a, Thurs or a Friday from one to four. And we can get that to you. The kit comes with the wood uh, cut out. It is going to be pre-primed for you, so we'll prime it for you. And then it also comes with the uh, the Sweet Summertime printout, so you'll have that available. And then it comes with uh, the ribbon to make the ribbon and the door hang and a and a piece of jute so you can hang it. Okay. When you're painting, you always want to try and paint with, or not try, you, you just want to do a couple light coats when painting as opposed to really heavy coats. Um, if you try and glob on a lot of paint to cover up or create a thick solid color, a lot of times what will happen is, and I'll see if I can show you this, you'll end up just starting to pull away your color. So let me see. So if I, it, you can kind of see as I'm painting, and I'm just trying to cover up some of that white behind there, I end up just pulling up the paint anyways. So you really wanna just do a light coat, let it dry, and then come back in with the second coat if you're needing to um, you know, get a more solid color or cover up that color. All right, so We've got our lemonade at the bottom. We've got the blue mason jar top. And so now I'm going to switch to my round brush. And actually, I think I'm gonna pick up a different size one. I'm gonna get a little bit bigger. 
So this is a size eight round. And before my blue dries, I'm going to add some of some white highlights to make it look like it's glass. So let me grab my finished one so I can show you what I mean. So along the top, you can kind of see there's some white blending going in around the edges, um, along the top here. I threw some white lines going across here. And so we're gonna add those in now while it's wet so that um, it blends in and it's not really a stark white. It, it becomes more of a really light blue. And we can even mix the color on our palette. So I've got a little bit of white here and then the blue that I used. And I'm actually just gonna dip it in both so I can get that light color. And I'm not gonna blend it on my plate. I'm just gonna use the two colors on my brush and let my brush blend it right on my mason jar. So let me see if I can hold this up. So I want to go around the edges to start with. And I'll create that little lip there for the top of the mason jar. And so it's because I'm not actually blending it on my plate, I'm just blending it on the door hanger. It creates in some areas a little bit of a whiter blue. In some areas it's more blue just because I'm just blending it right there and I get a lot of variation by having those two colors on my brush. So we're just gonna go all the way around the edges here. If it's a little bit too white for your liking, you can add you know, just more blue to your brush. Just dip it directly in the blue. You don't need to wash it. And just kind of blend that both that color around the edges. Okay. And then I'm also going to do the same along the uh, edge where the um, lemonade meets the jar. Doing this while the blue paint is wet allows you to kind of blend a little bit easier those two colors and create that light blue color. Okay. All right, so now that we've gone around the whole edge, I'm gonna come in and throw some uh, of that white line going across where those ridges are in the mason jar where the lid um, attaches. So let's see, I'm going to let's just come straight across here. And I'm not going to do a solid line because if you look at a mason jar, uh, the ridges go in a spiral around. So most of the time you see one as it's going around and then another kind of goes about halfway up from that. So we don't need to do a complete line all the way across. Kind of break it up to make it look like that spiral bridge that happens. So those who are in Glasgow, did you guys do the um, the uh, Freedom Cruise last night. I, we didn't get out to doing that last night, which I was kind of bummed. It sounded fun. I haven't cruised <laughs> since I was in high school, so it was kind of it was a kind of cool thing, I think. So now I'm just kind of adding a little bit more white where I think it needs it, just to kind of give it a little more definition. Mm -hmm. 
so this is just um, us adding some highlights here and at the end we'll add some black lines to kind of give it that definition. So it looks kind of messy right now, but once we add that black and some definition in there, you really start to see those lines pop out. Okay. All right, so now um, we're gonna let the top dry and we can start adding um, some more color to our base. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the light colored yellow on um, my plate and then I'm gonna add a, some of the dark yellow as well. Oh, Ruby, it, is it hard to paint upside down? Um, kind of. I'll probably turn it around when I do some more of the smaller details, but when you're just putting that base coat on, it's okay. There were a lot of cars out. Awesome, but the cops were out too. That's what I heard. I heard that there were some people that got tickets for lights or something like that. But I'm glad to hear that there were a lot of people out. I'm super bummed I missed it. Okay, so I'm gonna st I'm gonna um, continue using my round number eight, but really any size that you have will work around that size. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with my yellow. Um, I'm going to add some white around the edges and then um, I'm going to start adding the shapes of my lemon. Now, depending on your piece of wood or you, if you're doing it on canvas or um, if you're doing it in your sketchbook, you might want to do a second coat of yellow at this point, but I'm going to not do that second coat because again, I think having that variation in the yellow makes it look more like lemonade. Um, and some of these brush strokes that you see, um, I'll cover up with probably a lemon anyways. So I'm okay that it's not just a solid yellow. Um, but if you want to, at this point, put a second coat of yellow on, you definitely can. So um, because my yellow is already dry, um, it's important that I have yellow on my brush and white um, and I'm going to actually really load it up so I can do some blending around the edges. So we'll just um, again take that really really it's going to be a really light yellow and just go around those edges and highlight my jar. And then I'll also go along the top. Just add some lightness around there. And then at the bottom, I'm actually going to turn it around so I get my lines right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create the bottom of that mason jar, kind of a, uh, an oval at the bottom. And I'm going to turn it around so that I can see it so my oval doesn't look wonky. 
when you're drawing a line and you want it to be um, as as smooth and solid as possible uh, when you're painting you want to try and use uh, a quick brush stroke as opposed to something really really slow to try and get that uh, line where you want it because the slower we go the shakier our hands tend to be but if we use a long quick brush stroke you can get a um, uh, a smoother line also when you're doing a brush stroke like this you want to use your whole arm as opposed to just your wrist and there's brush strokes where you do just use your wrist but in this case um, if you saw, I just took my wrist and went all the way around and I was able to get a really smooth line um, right along the bottom of that without any jaggedness or um, wiggling there. So use your entire arm when you're doing brush strokes like that. All right, so I went along the bottom and now I'm going to come and put a little bit of an oval in that, an oval shape. And I'm not going to connect it. I don't want it to be a solid line there. Just a little bit of a shadow to indicate the bottom of our mason jar. There we go. So you can see it's a really flat oval and I didn't connect it at the top. I just wanted to give the appearance of the bottom of the mason jar. All right, so I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna leave those colors on it and I'm going to switch to my dark yellow and I'm going to start putting in the shapes of um, my lemons in. So with this one, um, let me just pull this up. They're very faint, they're not, I don't outline them in black. Um, so they're really a blended in color there. They're the, almost the same color, but it's almost as if they're in a fluid, so you can, um, in that in that lemonade. Because when you're looking at lemonade, you don't really see a solid um, shape of a lemon. It's kind of a uh, faded over. So I'm going to use the same brush, not wash it, dip it in yellow, and then I'm gonna do some different shapes. So I've got the circle, I've got a half circle and then I've got a quarter circle. So I'm just going to add a few there. Actually, I'm gonna start with my large uh, slice at the top. So I'm going to just draw my circle in and this is going to require a couple coats up here. So we'll start with this one so that when we get done, we can um, come back to that and add more coats to that. All right, so when you're doing your circles too, don't be too concerned or worried about creating the perfect circle. A lemon isn't a perfect circle anyways, so you don't wanna trace anything. Just take your hand and, and draw the best circle that you can, fill in where you want to, and um, just remember lemons aren't perfect circles, so. You can see how some of that blue is still coming through. So this lemon will definitely get some multiple coats there. But you can see that I've got a little flat spot there. And, and it's not perfect and that's okay. Okay. So we're going to add, grab some more of the dark yellow. And we will add some more. I'm going to add a couple more full slices of lemon in my lemonade. So I'll put one there, um, we'll add one, one at the bottom, and it's okay if they're not the same size, again lemons are all different sizes as well, so if one circle's a little smaller than the other, that's okay.
Okay, so I've got, I'm going to do three um, solid circles and then I'm going to come in and add a couple half circles. So I'm going to just draw a straight line and then an arc under it. Can you guys hear my family playing Monopoly out there? If you just joined, um, they're not allowed to be on their devices while I do a video because I don't want to lose connection. So they decided that while well, I'm doing a video, they'll play Monopoly. So I don't know how well that's going to go because Monopoly <laughs> is not a family fun game. It's a it's a family wrecker, right? <laughs> Does anyone play Monopoly with their family and end up walking away mad with everybody? Okay. Um, let's put one down here. We'll do one more. And now we're going to add a couple um, quarter sizes, uh, slices. So we will put one here. And so for that, we're just going to create a, uh, a V shape and then a little arc right under it. And we'll put a few here. Okay. And we'll do one up here. Okay, we'll do one down here. So you can add as many or as few uh, lemon slices as you want to your lemonade. If you're doing pink lemonade, um, strawberries would look pretty in this too. Um, or if you're doing iced tea, I guess lemons in the iced tea. Okay. So I think that looks okay. Um, my lemon up at the top still isn't quite dry, so that's all right. Um, we'll let that sit and dry for a little bit longer. Let me just look at this. Let me look at this this way. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now to make these look like lemon, we're going to go back to our light yellow and white. And so let me grab my example. So um, in the solids, I used the light color to create a circle around and then I divided it up and I added a few little seeds. Um, the quarter, again, just the white all the way around with some of the lighter yellow just to give it um, some dimension there. And then I also, in between all of it, just added these little swirls um, in the light yellow uh, just to give, just to fill in some of those empty spaces. Um, you could also add little squares uh, to indicate ice if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to uh, not wash my brush. Um, I'm just going to dip it into that light yellow. And I'm going to start adding some of that uh, inside pulp area of the lemon. So I created a circle inside my circle leaving some of that dark edging out to indicate the rind. And then I'm going to draw a line across my circle 
and then I'm going to go diagonal to that and another line through and then opposite of that. So you get a little uh, sunburst inside there. And then at this point, we can kind of round these little uh, triangles out. around the edges so they're not um, so they don't look like you know a, a not a rectangle a triangle a triangle so I just took my brush and went around the edges and kind of rounded those off to make it look more of a like a lemon slice and then I'm going to add a little bit more white to my brush and just draw a little bit of a line, a small little brush stroke inside some of my uh, triangles to indicate uh, maybe a seed. So some of them are a little bit more white than others and that's okay. So there's your lemon. And then you can add some more white. You can add more light yellow if you want. Um, you can kind of just play with that shading inside there. Maybe add just a couple white streaks around. Maybe in the, in the center there. So I just added a little bit of white around there and that really helps. Um, just kind of indicate maybe um, the sun's shining on it. There's a, a little bit of light reflecting off of that. So let's do another one. We'll go down to the bottom uh, circle here. And we're using, again, the lighter yellow and a white right in the brush. So we're going to create that circle within the circle to start with. So we've got the dark outer yellow indicating the rind. Yeah, do we need a break? Let me finish this lemon and then we will uh, take a little break. Okay, so uh, for the uh, whole circle, we're just going to draw a line across. And then um, you can go, you know, right to left and then up and down. And then we're going to. Um, Go at a diagonal there, so you've got that pinwheel. And then just round the edges of your um, triangles here, so they're not so triangly looking, geometric looking. You want them to look a little more natural down there. So they're rounded at the edges. And then I'm going to take my, uh, just dip my brush straight into white and then just add a couple little small brush strokes inside those divisions to indicate maybe um, a few seeds. And then I will add white all the way around.
So did everyone enjoy the warm weather yesterday? It was my youngest's birthday uh, yesterday. He turned 11 and we were so thankful for the nice weather. We played ball outside, we played cornhole. And then we came in and played a couple games because we got too hot. <laughs> and then we went back out. And then we were gonna go get popcorn and do the, the cruise last night, but that just didn't happen. So it's so fun to see, I think, seeing these com uh, businesses um, kind of step away from the norm and, and offer services even in these crazy times. I love that the movie theater is offering fresh pop popcorn um, on certain days. Has anyone gone and got some of that? Okay. So we're going to, um, I think I'm going to try it. No, it's still a little bit wet. I was going to say I could add a second coat to my big ramen along the top, but that ain't going to happen right now. It's still wet. So I'm going to um, start uh, adding my pulp area to my other pieces of lemon. We'll do the half circles here. And again, same thing. Uh, we're going to just use that light yellow and white mix. So I'm going to do the half circle around the edge. And then um, with this one, I'm going to divide it into three uh, triangles. So I'm gonna start at the top in the center and I'm gonna draw a line down um, at an angle, not straight down. And then from that, um, another one. So we're creating a V, for an upside down V if you, if you can see that. So um, where is it? Here it is. So I started at the center here and I'm just creating a V shape to divide the area into three. And then I'm gonna go across the top. And then at that point, we're going to do the same thing we did with the uh, circles, the full slices. And we're gonna round out those edges. There we go. So rounding out those edges makes it a little bit more real looking like lemon. And then again, we're going to dip just in the white and just do small little brush strokes for some seeds. There we go. All right, so we'll go on to the other one. Using the light yellow and white. Create that inner shape and then start at the center, at the top of the flat part here and we're gonna create a V to divide that into three even shapes. And then we can round those out there. Paint two more, one with an iced tea and one with a pink lemonade. <laughs> yeah, I could. Yeah, maybe that could be a couple just small videos throughout the week. So you could see what they look like. Um, and then we're going to add some 
There we go. Oh, I have one more. We'll just do that. So I tried to slow down, Afton. Are you able to catch up? Do I? Do we need to slow down even more? And hopefully you're wearing paint clothes and not putting your hand in paint because that's what I do all the time. That's what those look like. And then we'll move on to the quarter pieces. Oh, that's okay. I'm glad you're able to paint, even with a two-year-old. Um, okay, so for the quarter pieces, um, you can either just leave them as a uh, single inner piece like that, or you can divide it into two. And it's just really going to depend on, um, you know, how wide your quarter pieces are. Um, so, for instance, if you had a wider uh, quarter piece, you might want to divide that in half. So I just went again with the light yellow and white, followed the, um, just went right inside my shape. And then I went straight down from the point to the arc. And so now I've got three inner, or two inner parts there. And again, I'm gonna round them out here. I'm gonna add a little bit of the seeds inside. Let me round this one out. I forgot to do this one up here. Okay, and then we'll do keep, continue on with your others. I got one more here. I'll try and keep my sleeve out of the paint. Alright, so I've got all my lemons done. At this point, my top lemon here is ready for its second coat finally. Um, and so I'm going to get a little bit more of that dark yellow cover up that um, blue there and I didn't wash my brush so it's got some of that light color in there and that's okay it's kind of giving me a cool effect there just blending that color right in there So it's not completely um, uh, solid yellow, and that's okay, because I think, you know, when you cut a slice of lemon, you kind of can see through it and some of the color there, so um, we're okay with that second color. Wow. Pam, that would be cool to put all three together uh, with the pink lemonade and the iced tea. That would look really cool. That might have to be something we do. Oh, I didn't really need to wash my brush. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, this is still wet at the top, and um, that's okay. I'm going to add my um, inner bits to it. It will just blend right in with the light and the white anyways. 
so I'm going back to the light yellow and the white on my brush and I'm just going to lightly lay a coat on that lemon. Just kind of laying that light color right on the dark color because it's still wet. If you press too hard, um, we'll end up just picking up that dark color and seeing underneath it anyways. So just a light brush stroke to create that inner pulp area. Okay, and so we're gonna go um, up and down to create the inner bits and go across. Um, and then at diagonals. And then I will just lightly round out those edges. And I am kind of picking up some of my paint and that's okay. We might have to come back and touch this area up. So you can kind of see along the top there and I don't know if you can in the video, but I, it was still so wet that when I brushed over it, it just kind of picked up all the paint which is one reason why you should kind of wait till your paint's completely dry, unless you're trying to blend colors. Okay, I'll just add a couple little seeds up here, and then we'll let this dry and come back and touch up if we need to. Okay. So at this point, you could add some um, ice cubes down below, just some light colored white-ish um, squares, um, or you could add some swirly designs if you wanted to add more to it. Uh, let me pull up my example. My swirls are a little bit hard to see, but... Um, you can kind of see I just used a white or the light yellow with white and created these swirls around in different areas. And it just helps add interest to some of those um, empty areas. So that's what we'll do next. And I'm gonna get a little bit more white. Okay, so I've got, still I've got some of that light w yellow and the white, and I'm going to, again, just like before, put both colors on there and just do a couple swirls in some areas. You could do a solid white if you wanted them to be a little bit more noticeable. You could just do the solid or the, the darker yellow um, if you wanted them. You could do both the white and the dark yellow if you wanted your swirls to really stand out. And they don't need to be really intricate swirls, just a... Just a... Uh, almost like you're going to draw a circle, but then widen it out. Um, and try and do them in different... So in this case, I did them both the same. I started and went counterclockwise. This next one, I'm gonna go clockwise um, so that my swirls look a little different. So just rotate from clockwise to counterclockwise um, just to make sure your swirls don't look like they're all the same. And you can do smaller or bigger ones, some that have a little bit longer tail.
So we're just filling in these empty areas here to give our drink some interest. Hi, Fallon. Um, so I'm going to actually dip my brush in some of that dark yellow and just add some dark swirls. Maybe just go over some of the top of these ones that kind of are hidden. That are a little bit too light. Just add a little bit more detail to the painting. So I'm going just right over the top of some of them that I already have out there. add some contrast there. And if you're nervous about painting swirls, you can always um, uh, do it on a, just practice a couple swirls on uh, a scratch sheet of paper. Um, but again, it's one of those things that you kind of just want to move your whole you know, maybe set your elbow down and move your elbow instead of this. You might get a little bit more control that way too. Okay, next we are going to add our, uh, we're going to add the leaf here. Um, while our lemonade is drying, the swirls are drying, because then we'll come in and put the straw in. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of that spring green. And you could also add leaves inside the lemonade if you wanted um, it to look like you were adding like mint leaves. That would be kind of cool too, to add some contrast inside the lemonade. So I'm gonna use the same size brush. It's just my larger round, I think it's, what did I say it was, an eight. Um, but any size round that you're comfortable using will work. And when you're doing a leaf, it's almost like two parentheses next to each other. Um, or two C's, I guess. So I'm gonna just start here and um, kind of where the lemonade and the jar meet, and I'm gonna just brush a, a parenthesis out there, like that. And then I'm going to go from the other way, start um, at the bottom of my leaf and brush a parenthesis out that way. So two parentheses touching each other is really the, um, the shape of the leaves there. And so then I'm going to fill it in. Okay. And I'm going to do um, one pointing down into the lemonade. And I'm going to make this one just a little bit bigger. Starting at that point where I um, started my other leaf. Kind of a bigger parenthesis there. And then we're gonna go the other way with another parenthesis. So two parentheses touching each other is really all leaves are. Simple leaves anyways, and these look great. And I'll just fill that in. There we go, two leaves. And like I said, you could add some leaves down in the lemonade if you wanted to for um, mint, maybe, mint leaves. Um, and then while my paint is still dry and while I still have green on, I'm going to go and dip my brush into the white. Just a little dip, so I've got the green and the white on there. And I'm going to add some small little brush strokes inside my leaves just to give it some highlight. 
going to blend that light color in there. So there we go, we've got our leaves in there. Okay, so my, I think I'm pretty good dry-wise on my lemonade to put my straw in next. So with my straw, I'm going to, you can freehand your straw in, um, or if you want to use a ruler, you can. So I am going to just um, lay my ruler kind of where I want my straw to go. Um, and just think about where I want that to be. So I'm going to draw one line. Um, and so that's kind of one side of my straw. So I, my straw is going to kind of stick up to where my ridges are here. And it's not going to sit at the bottom of my cup, although you could. And you can have your straw sit in the other way as well. And I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to eyeball how thick I want my straw. So this is my original line. I'm kind of just saying, you know, where the thickness is, you know, and eyeballing that to be straight-ish. Um, and then draw the other side in just a really light line. And just lightly drag your pencil across. Don't try and press too hard. One, you'll create a groove in your paint. And two, the harder you press, um, the thicker the um, graphite gets deposited and it's harder to paint over. So I just put, and I don't have to put the top and the bottom on in there. I can paint that part in. There's my pencil, or not my pencil, <laughs> my uh, straw. So we're gonna start with white for the straw and we're gonna paint the entire thing white and then we will come over the white with the pink um, swirls, stripes. So I just added a little more white to my plate, some clean stuff next to it because a lot of that was mixed with my yellow and I'm just going to lay a coat of white inside that, inside those lines. to move this so that I can get a good straight line here with my hand. Okay, there we go. And I did round this up a little bit to indicate that it was a straw that was cylinder. And so we're gonna let that dry before we put the pink on and um, we can start adding some detail to the top of our, um, our detail around the edges and we are going to use black for that. And I'm going to get my smallest brush that you have. Um, this like, the numbers, I'll paint it up. I think it's a two. 
just a liner brush, something small to create thin lines. And what we're going to do is kind of outline the entire um, door hanger. So let me pull this out here. So what we're adding here is um, just some fun, whimsical lines around the edging. Um, here I've kind of, and I'll show you how, but I, I pretty much just put my brush down, drag it until it runs out of paint, and that's where I stop. And then I added a couple fun, uh, or three dots, you could do two or one or an X maybe. Um, and then I dip my brush, drag it until it runs out of paint, and then that's where my um, fun little dots come in next. Um, and so we're gonna do that all the way around while our straw is drying. So when you're doing line work like this, you wanna just make sure that you really load your brush up. Um, it's a really small brush, so you can't uh, load it up with too much paint. You don't want it so it's dripping off, but you also don't wanna to have to struggle drawing your lines and run out before you want to. So let's just, I'm gonna start up in this corner and work my way around this way. Um, and make sure to move your piece of art, your, your canvas, your um, wood piece, whatever it is you're using around so that you can um, really get a good line when you're doing a lining brush there. So again, just make sure my brush is loaded. I'm going to lay it down on my wood with just a light touch and drag until it runs out of paint. And depending on how much that is, you could go pretty far with that. So um, you can kind of see it starts to fade right there. Um, and that's kind of how I want it to look. And you could definitely just go around and give it a solid black outline and that would look fine too. Um, but I like the looks of just the breaking up of the lines. I think it adds some fun, um, whimsical look to it. Now with this one, instead of the dots, I'm going to just do some X's, almost like a stitch mark. So I'm gonna do two X's here. So I just did a couple X's there. And now I'm going to go back to drawing my line, outline, loading my brush up, lightly laying it on the piece of wood or your whatever you're using and just dragging until it runs out. Sometimes you might get a longer line, sometimes you might get a shorter line, and that's okay. I just, I think it looks great that way with different um, lengths of line. So then I added a couple of the X's there, and then I'll just continue all the way around my mason jar. Now at some points, I do like to pick it up, um, and especially in this area where um, I stopped it right where that uh, lip is gonna be, and then I'm going to just do the lip in one stroke, and then I'll pick up there. So there's that nice break there. And I didn't put the X's there. You could if you want, again, Add whatever fun little detail you want at this point, whether it be a dot, an X, maybe you just have a bunch of short little lines to um, look like stitching, that would be cool too. So a lot of different ways that you can add some fun touches to your outline. You could do X's one time, you could do dots the next time. And sometimes your X's might be a little fatter than the others, that's okay. Um, it just adds to the um, fun nature of this sign. There we go. 
So there's the X's, and let me show you then again what the dots look like, and then you can decide how you want to paint yours. So a little different there. Oh, and I threw my brush in the water, so now I've got to clean it. Okay, so loading my liner brush up, we'll just continue around the mason jar. Couple X's. create that break at the ridge so I don't have a solid line there. And we can fit one little X in there, I guess. Okay. So we've gone all the way around our mason jar with our fun outlining. And let's see, where is my, my straw is still wet. So we'll let that dry for a few more minutes and we'll add some detail around the top of our ridge, or the top of our mason jar in this ridge area. Okay. Using black, I'm going to just draw some lines in the same areas that I have the white to give that those ridges um, some definition. So just using light strokes um, to create those line, light lines. So when you're painting, let me just do it on a, I'll just do it on this, um, this piece of, or my table cover here. So when you're painting, you, the lighter you, the lighter pressure you use, the thinner line you will get. If I were to use a lot of pressure, I'm gonna get a big fat line, even though I'm using that liner brush. And you can't see that, right? So that makes a difference as well when you are creating your outlines for things. If you just use a light pressure, um, you can get a really nice thin line. Or if you wanted a thicker line, a, a heavier pressure when you're doing your brush stroke will give you that thicker line too. Okay, um, so let's add, since we're kind of working on the top up here, let's add some lines to um, break up our mason jar and our lemon aid. So just add a few lines around here. And it doesn't have to be solid. So I've just added a couple lines along the top. Okay, and then I'm going to add um, some outline lines or some lines around my lemon up at the top here. I'm not going to add the lines in the lemonade because it's a liquid down there and I don't want to take away from the fact that those lemons are floating in water. If I were to put a black line around those, which you could, um, they would really pop and not look like they were kind of pushed to the back. Um, and then let's throw some lines around your leaves. And then I'm going to add 
actually add a line down the center of my leaf just to give that uh, vein definition. So I didn't do a complete solid circle around my lemon up there. You can kind of see how my brush strokes kind of fade in and fade out. Um, again, I think it really adds some fun uh, whimsical feel to the, the door hanger to not be a solid. But you could definitely go solid around it. Okay. All right, so the straw is done. And so I'm going to now switch brushes back to my larger round. And we're going to add the pink to our straw. Okay. So with this, you want your straw to look like it's got a stripe going all the way around it in a spiral. So we're going to create just these um, rectangles at an angle. And I'm just going to eyeball them. I'm not going to measure anything. You, you can if you want to. Um, another thing you could do if you have one is um, use a flat brush and just use that as your guide. So for instance, if you had um, something like this, you could create just the stripe that is the thickness of your brush. Um, and then, you know, a thickness brush away, create another stripe, another stripe, another stripe. So you could use that if you have it. Um, but I'm going to just use the round here to show you how that's done. Okay. So, let's see, do I want to, I'm going to just have the top of my straw be a solid pink. So I'm going to just draw at a diagonal. And in actuality, it's almost horizontal to you. Um, because our straw is at an angle, this line can be horizontal to you and it will be at an angle to the straw, if that makes sense. So then I'm gonna just fill this in. Okay, so I've got my first little stripe there, and then I'm going to go a little bit further down and put another uh, line there. Again, this is, hor if you think about it, it's horizontal to you uh, because your straw is at an angle. Um, so you don't have to worry about going at another angle to create your stripes on your straw. So we got our second stripe on there. And then I will just eyeball my next one. Now if you accidentally put a stripe where it shouldn't be or your line goes off course or um, you know you got them too thick, you don't like how it looks, you can always just start over. but. You want to make sure that your pink um, paint is dry completely and then what you can do is let this dry and then come back and paint white over it to kind of start over there. Or if you know you, you kind of went outside your lines, just let it dry and then come back with white. It's really, really important to let it dry first because if you don't and you just try and lay white over your mistake, what will happen is, is you'll get a pink or you'll start blending that pink that if you lay white over your pink you'll get a light pink I should say um, but it will start to blend and it will be harder to cover 
So let it dry completely and then come back over your mistake with white and all will be well. Hi, Lori. Hi, Angie. Um, okay, so we're just going to continue on with our stripes. Another uh, tip too when you're painting um, is to step away from your painting if you're really struggling with how it looks. Um, sometimes, well most times we are our worst critic and so whenever we make a mistake that's all we see in our eyes, you know, in, in looking at our painting. Um, you know, you just see that brush stroke that went haywire and it looks funky and um, you know, like this stripe doesn't look quite as right for me, but if I were to just get up, take a break, and then come back, um, your eyes haven't been focused on that, so then you see the entire thing, um, and you'll most likely forget about that little mistake, and it will, it will look great. So if you are hating it, then then it's time for a break. Go get a cup of coffee or something to drink. It might be too late for coffee. Um, and then come back to it and most of the time you will forget about that small little brush stroke that didn't quite work out. So my stripes are really not that perfect. That's all right. We're going to add some black lines around the straw too, which will help look, make it look, kind of give it some more definition too. Okay. There we go. So I'm just touching up some areas that kind of got lost here. There we go. So I've got a couple stripes kind of right in here that are a little bit off, but you know, from far away, it'll look okay. So be kind to yourself as well when you're painting. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my uh, liner brush and I'm going to just add a few lines around my straw just to give it a little bit more detail. I'm not going to outline it solid. Um, just a few lines here and there and then we will go on to um, making our bow and then we will do the sweet summertime uh, work that'll let our straw dry so I'm going to use my liner brush again and dip it in the black and I'm just going to drag with light pressure until it 
runs out. And I'll pick it up and move my hand down a little bit and drag. Again, I'm using the entire motion of my arm to get a nice straight line instead of trying to just maybe use my fingers because I can only go so far with that. Um, you just get a really nice line if you can just drag your arm the length that you're wanting to go. So make sure to move your canvas around so that you have access to a full range in your arm. There we go. And you could also add some lines maybe in the stripes if you wanted to to add maybe not all of them, just a few. There we go. All right. So while this is drawing, we're going to move off, move on to the bow and uh, get ready to do the sweet summer time. So I'm going to set this off to the side here real quick. And I'm going to take my bow material and I've got some different material here. I've got some tool, a strip of tool. I've got some really wide uh, burlap, yellow burlap, I've got some green burlap, and then some buffalo plaid. And then I also love this raffia stuff um, that you can get at the craft store. It comes in a bag, it's kind of wrapped around itself. It's not really with the ribbon. Okay, so to make my bow, I'm going to do just a simple bow, and I'm going to start by cutting my strips in half. So right now these are at 12 inches, and I'm going to cut them in half so that they're 6 inches. Let me find my scissors. So I'm just going to fold them in half, and then cut at the fold. I'll do that with all of them. Okay, so we're going to actually have two of these colors, two each. And then for the uh, tool here, um, I'm going to cut them, well, let's see, how much do I have here? I'm going to fold it in half. I think I have enough for like four strips. So I'm going to fold it in half. I think there's 48 inches here. So I'll fold it in half, and I'm going to fold it in half again. And I'm going to leave it that big, actually. So these are going to actually be 12 inches long-ish. So I got one, two. Oh. Three, four. Four pieces. So I'm going to have that as my base. So I'm going to set that there. And then I'm going to add this next, and this is kind of funky. I kind of just lay it and then cut it afterwards to my liking, however long we want it to be. So that's going to be laid down next, and I don't have my tie. One second. You need something to tie your ribbon. Um, okay. So that's kind of my base of my bow that I'm going to create. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dovetail my ribbon. And what that means is I'm going to just create some points in it so it looks nice. And this big one is just going to be more of a wide dovetail. So what we do is we fold it in half. And along the fold here, we're going to cut from the fold out and up to your open ends. So we get that, okay? And then I'll lay that there. And I'll do it again for my other ribbon. So you wanna do it on both sides of your ribbon. 
and this uh, yellow ribbon is so fat, we're just going to create a very narrow, I guess, dovetail. I'm gonna put that there for right now. And we'll do it for the green. So we're folding our ribbon in half from the fold out to the open end. We're going to cut at an angle, and that gives us the dovetail. So obviously, our, so if I were to cut at a really deep angle like this, I'm going to get really long tails. Um, and then as you angle your scissor, you know, this way, you'll get maybe a narrow dovetail. So however you want the ends of your ribbon to look, um, use that angle to give your ends maybe more tail, less tail. So we've got that one done. And we have one more. Okay. Push that off to the side. And now we're going to put our ribbon together. Okay, so um, we're going to gather our tool first in our hand. And then I'm going to lay that raffia uh, straw type stuff on top. And then I'm going to get, get my yellow. So I'm flipping over the stack here. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to lay my yellow here and I'm going to use this hand. And I'm just going to walk my fingers over it. And it's going to gather it for me into this uh, shape here. And then I'm going to just lay that um, right in my finger and thumb little sandwich there. So I'm going to lay my uh, piece on my table and I'm going to just walk my fingers over it, squeezing it together and creating a gathered uh, piece there. I'll just lay that in there. And you can kind of um, start to lay them crisscross as you do just to create a uh, fuller bow. Yes, do you want me to start over, Beck? Is it Becky? So I'm going to lay my ribbon. Um, and I'm going to start with my thumb on one side and I'm going to just uh, walk my fingers across to gather it. Like that. If you need me to start over with the bow, just let me know. And so I'm um, just laying it in my, uh, in between my finger and my thumb there. Now I'm going to grab my next one, and I'm just going to kind of pinch it together. And then um, lay it in my finger. And when I lay it in there, you can kind of see that my green ribbon is going this way. So I'm going to try and position my next green ribbon the other way so that I get a full uh, bow at the end. If you don't get it like that right away, that's okay because you can fluff it and move it afterwards. And then we're going to end with the two buffalo plaids. And again, just lay it on the ground and squeeze it with your fingers to create a, uh, a gathered middle. And I'm just going to stick it in my sandwich here. And then we will go do that again. And I'll try to sandwich it in there the other um so I did my first one kind of pointed this way, so this one I'm kind of trying to point it that way. But again, once we start tying it, that's all going to kind of shift anyway, so if it doesn't get that way, um, don't be concerned about it because we can fluff it afterwards. So let me know if you want me to start that process over again because I can definitely do that. So we've got um, our tool here, which is kind of long, so we'll kind of trim that. We put in the... Um, raffia or the straw and then we did the two pieces of the yellow we did the green 
and then the buffalo pup. So now I'm going to lay just a piece of my um, my uh, burlap or my jute down here, string, and I'm going to then lay. The, let's see if I can do it this way. I'll lay my string this way here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, the top part of my ribbon, down on my string, and then we're going to tie it behind. So I'm going to lay this down, and again, it's probably going to kind of come out. Um, maybe you might lose some of your cleats, but kind of try and keep that squeezed in the center there. And then create a tie in the back. And give it a good squeeze. And then do a second bow or a second knot if you need to. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like to start with. It's not very pretty right now. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to fluff it to um, make it look good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yellow that you can't see back here and I'm going to pull my pieces kind of to the center. So I'm pulling them to create um, almost a sunburst look um, where I can I have ribbon that goes all the way around so if I look at the other side of this let me hide this tool here um, you can kind of see it's all bunched up in the back and what we want to do is take one of the pieces and a second of uh, the other piece and we're gonna kind of just pull on that so that it goes around so now you can kind of see how they're meeting at the top there so you can kind of twist, give a gentle pull. Now this um, burlap too, you don't want to pull too hard, otherwise you'll start pulling out some of the threads there. Um, since we cut it, you can kind of see I, I pulled a little bit and my thread kind of came out there. And we can trim that up afterwards, but you just want to give it some gentle tugs. So in the back now, if we look at it, um, we've kind of got yellow that goes all the way around. If I hide that tool okay and so now we see more of that yellow in the front and now we're going to take the green and we're just going to again tug it a little bit away from the middle and then we can also do the same with the burlap just kind of shape those pieces so you kind of have that okay and then I'll put my tool back out and I'm happy with the bow so I'm going to actually double knot my back now and I'm going to then lay it flat on the table and I'm going to take that tool and kind of I'm going to play with where I want it to go, tugging at it, pulling the pieces kind of around my bow and then you can come back and if some pieces are too long you can trim them down I like the tool to be a little bit longer than everything else but I don't want it to be too big just a little bit wider than the main bow itself okay Got that pretty white kind of sticking out from the edges there and then with this stuff I kind of just like this to hang down below so I typically just pull that straight down and then where there's some of these loops I'll cut the loops if there are any so that they're all individual pieces and kind of just trim it to how I want it to look if there's some pieces that are too long or if there's pieces that are sticking out too much um, you can definitely trim that up. And don't trim too much. Wait till you get it on your um, mason jar and then um, take a look at it again. So that's your bow. So we're done with that part. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And we are next going to start working on our uh, words.
And this will be the last step. But we'll have to attach the bow. So with the kit, you've got um, a piece of paper with the word Sweet Summertime on it. If you didn't get a kit, um, but you want to use this method, you could definitely just type something into Word with the font that you like and then print it out. Um, or if you had a different phrase that you wanted to use, you could do that as well. Um, but at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, actually flip this over and you can kind of see where your words are. And we're going to um, create um, a graphite tracing. So we're just going to take a pencil and just add some graphite to the back of where our words are. You don't have to do it to the entire uh, piece of paper, just where your words are. And it doesn't have to be super dark. Just a little goes a long way. If you had a piece of um, graphite paper, you could you could use that as well. And by graphite paper, or here I'll show you in just a minute what I mean. Carbon paper is another word for it. If you had carbon paper, you could use that. So just trace, or just get some pencil markings over your letters. So I just added that to the back of my words. So carbon paper looks like this. Um, it's the black paper. It's got the dull side on one and then the graphite on the other. And you could then, if you had some of this, you could then sandwich that in between your sign and your words and trace on that. And it will then leave the outline for you. If you had that, you could use that. Um, but this way works well as well. Okay, so you want to make sure your sign is completely dry at this point. Um, otherwise, we'll smear it. Um, and then just position your sweet summertime words wherever you want them. I'm not really going to measure. I'm just going to kind of eyeball where, um, you know, where this E and the S begin. It's probably a thumb length away from the edge. So I know that it's positioned this way. And then I kind of want it towards the top here. Um, so it's um, kind of centered in the entire uh, mason jar, um, not centered in the lemon. Okay, so once we've got it positioned where we want to, we can come back with our pencil and we're just going to trace over the letters. Now this, um, the Sweet Summertime does have a thickness and you can take the time and trace over each side of the line, but um, I am for the length of this, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to trace in the middle of those lines and then I'm gonna let my brush create the thickness that I want. So all I'm doing is I'm going down the center of my wording just to get the shape and the location of those words. And then I'm going to use my liner brush um, to give me that thickness that you see that's, you know, it's not too thick, um, but so we can see it really well. Put the little heart up there. I'm just going to double check on that. We've got some lines going there. So when you're tracing over your words like this, you do want to apply some pressure to it. You don't need to 
gouge it, but you do want to have some pressure so that you start to see um, your words underneath using that graphite there that's getting transferred. So just double check your work every once in a while. If you're worried about your, your paper moving, you could put a little piece of masking tape up here to hold it down so that you can then flip it up and look at it and check on how you're doing um, if you want to do that as well. Before I remove it, I'm just going to double check, make sure it's all there, it is, so I can take it off completely. And I should be able to see the faint lines there, but I'm going to then use my liner brush and paint over. So depending on the font that you use, you know, if you use a, a big blocky font, if you're, you're doing your own sign and you're kind of customizing it, you might want to uh, trace along all of the edges. But because this is such a, a thin font to begin with, oh, I guess I gotta do it this way. I can literally just draw along the center and then with my brush, use it to give it some thickness. So I'm really just, trying to create that style and um, location for my, my letters. So for this, I am going to flip it around so that it's right reading for me so I can see what I'm doing. I don't know if I could do handwriting upside down. Okay, so I've got my liner brush and I'm gonna get a little more black because my black dried out a little bit. And we are going to then paint in our sweet summertime. And I'm gonna use just a nice light brush stroke. And it, when you're brushing on letters like this, as, uh, that is gonna just be, you know, one brush stroke, you don't have to try and brush on the letters like you would write the letters. For instance, this S, if I were to write an S with a pencil, it would be one stroke, okay? You just go like that. But when you're using a brush, it's okay to just drop it off where once you turn a corner, your brush bristles are going to switch direction and then you might get a thicker little blob right there. So take your brush to a point where it's not going to switch directions or your wrist has to switch directions to keep that brush stroke going. So like on this S, I stopped it right where it was gonna start coming back up. And now I'm going to pick my brush up and brush down to meet that. If you're, you know, if you are, have experience with calligraphy and um, working with calligraphy and brushes, then you might be able to do that. But to me, it seems to be a little bit easier to think about, I'm just brushing down. And if I can't, at, at the point where I get down to the bottom, I pick my brush up and go to the next downstroke. So all my letters are downstrokes. Um, because I feel I have more control that way. So my W there, I'm going down and then I'm gonna come to the center of that W and come down to that point. So all of those were a downstroke. I started here, went down to that little loop. I came back, 
came down to that loop, down and down. So I hope that makes sense. For me, that's easier um, than trying to force my brush to turn. Some of my strokes, um, depending on the letter themselves, are easier as well. Like the E, I'm not going to go like a typical E. I'm going to start at the top of my E, do the C part of it, and then come back and close it off, come back to that top. You can go back and thicken it up if you want in certain areas. And make my S just a little bit thicker. So we've got our sweet. Go on to our summertime. And don't forget to load your brush up um, so you're not having to work that paint around so much. You can create a longer stroke with just putting a little bit more paint in there. If you're nervous about painting these letters, you can always practice just tracing this. You could make a copy of this and then just paint right over this and practice one time. That would um, help you. And then you can get your brush strokes down maybe you like to use more of an upstroke as opposed to a downstroke like I do. Um, everyone's going to be a little bit different, I think. Oh, I did my arm a little bit different. That's okay. There we go. So it's not perfect. 
but I like that it looks like handwritten, a uh, little handwritten sign. My ends are a little bit different. Some are a little bit thicker. That's okay. You can go back and thicken up areas. Okay. One last thing with the lettering. I think that really helps um, make that lettering pop is I'm going to add some white behind it. Um, just to give it a little bit of highlight and have it pop away from the um, lemonade. So I'm not going to completely outline the letters. I'm just going to add some lines to the right side of the, whoops, I got too much paint there, the right side of the lines. So let me do one here. I'm going to go to that side and I'm not going to do the ups and downs. So what I did was I went on the right side of this line. I broke it. I came down and did the right side of that little loop. I went inside there and then I just did a little bit on top there. And once you do that with the entire wording, it helps pop it off of that um, lemonade so you see it just a little bit better. And this step is totally optional. You could do this step in the white like I am. You could do this step in the dark yellow. Um, just something to help those letters stand um, stand out. Doesn't have to be perfect. They're just some white brush strokes following your black lines. show you what that looks like. It, it's not very noticeable, but it does help those, like I said, those letters pop out a little bit. Kind of add some shadow behind them. So I just went on the right side of the lines and I followed those black lines. Okay, so we'll do the sweet and let me just something here okay okay there it is all done so now we're just going to add a piece of string in the holes and then we can add our, uh, let me grab my string here. Okay. So I'm just going to get my string inside these holes here. If you're jute, that, if you're using jute and you find that it's hard to get through that hole, you can put a piece of tape along the wrap tape around here and um, then it acts like a shoestring end and it's easier to get through if you're having problems with that. So I'm just going to string it through the, to the back and then I'm going to come up to the front here real quick and then we'll tie a knot. Also, when you're using jute, if you twist it and turn it in, that helps too. So we'll just tie a little knot at the two ends here. Okay. So 
we've got it on the string. And then at this point, we can take our bow and we've got the two pieces of jute or string that we use to tie the bow together. And I'm gonna just tie this around my hanger. So I'm going to grab my hanger, tie that, and I'm not gonna cut it. I'm gonna let that jute hang down to add some fun texture to my bow, I guess. I'll slide it down to the point where it meets my door hanger. And there we go. So I tied it around this piece um, and then just slid it down to the point where it's touching my door hanger. So there we go. There's your sweet summertime door hanger mason jar. Um, if you are interested in a kit for this, message me. Uh, our website is showing that they are out of stock right now and I will try and get that fixed. But the kit comes with the wood cutout. You get this mason jar cutout. It will be pre-primed. You get all the paint and you get the um, supplies to make the bow. And you'll get this printout. And um, this, what, this uh, video will be saved uh, indefinitely on our website. So you can go back and paint it later if, if you want. And that's it. So thanks everybody for joining us today. I hope... Um, if you didn't get to paint with us today that you get to paint another time um, and if you do paint another time with this and you have any questions please message me I'd be happy to help um, if you're struggling with an area or whatever it is um, I'd be happy to help you with that so thanks for watching and have a great Sunday talk to you later